it's Gina and welcome back to my channel. Today I am taking you on our first magic carpet ride into the world of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs which came out in 1937. I'm really excited to start this series and Snow White is the first of the princesses. She is also the first, well her movie rather, is the first animated feature length film. So the way these videos are going to kind of go, I'm going to give you the IMDB description, which is typically a sentence that, I mean, it explains it, but it's fine. And then I'm going to go through kind of my plot recap. And then I'm going to give you some information, including history and some fun facts that I found. And then at the end, I'm going to go through my overall thoughts watching it now as a 20 something year old adult instead of a child and I'm pretty excited and kind of give you some of my thoughts from the last time I watched it or like if it's one I watch a lot spoiler it's not and that's kind of how this is going to go I will say that all of these videos will be spoiler filled so if you have not seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and you don't want spoilers which I feel like you probably know what it is if you haven't seen it. Please pause the video, go watch it, and come back if you would like. If you don't mind spoilers, stick around. But I am going to go through an entire plot recap, which will spoil everything. So, that being said, let's dig right on in to Snow White. And if you see me looking down, that's because I have all of my facts and stuff under the camera, so... I don't have to pause as often, hopefully. So the IMDb description for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is exiled into the dangerous forest by her wicked stepmother, a princess is rescued by seven dwarf miners who make her part of their household. Which it does explain it, but it also doesn't give you a lot. So my kind of plot recap if you will. I did write all this out so that is why it's gonna feel like I'm reading. Yeah, I'll get used to reading things in later videos but my plot recap for this is this is the story of Snow White who has gone into hiding from the evil queen because the evil queen wants her dead because she's the fairest and the evil queen wants to be the fairest of them all so she has the huntsman take her into the forest to kill her, tries to get him to take her heart out and put it in this box he feels bad for her and tells her to run and hide and don't ever come back and then he kills a pig and puts a pig's heart in the box. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end well. Um, so there are woodland creatures who help her find this cottage to kind of help her escape and everything. So she goes into this cottage and she sees various things in sevens. So like there's seven little chairs and then eventually she goes up into the upstairs and there's seven little beds. She initially thinks that it's seven little children that are living there who don't have a mother and she sees how dirty and disgusting the room is and there's cobwebs everywhere, dishes everywhere, clothes everywhere. So she decides to take it upon herself to clean. Which I, I don't know, have y'all ever entered someone's house and it's like, oh this is disgusting, I'm gonna clean while you're not home? Like, unless they ask you to, I wouldn't. Cleaning is not fun. <laughs> but she has the woodland creatures help her clean and they dust and mop and do dishes and do laundry and all kinds of stuff. So after that whole sequence, she ends up going to sleep in their beds and ends up like sprawling across three of them, which again, why would you go to sleep in random people's beds? that you don't know, first of all, and two, they don't know you're there! Like, she's lucky she didn't get killed by the dwarves. <clears throat> I digress. Um, so the dwarves come home from their mining excursions of that day, and they discover that their house is clean. So they're freaking out, they don't know what's going on, they eventually go upstairs, or rather have Dopey go upstairs and try to see what's happening. Snow White is in a bed sheet and she looks like a ghosty monster thing because she's like stretching and it's like all monstery and Dopey freaks out and then they go almost kill her. Luckily they ripped the sheet from her head and saw that she was a girl and not a monster, otherwise the movie would have ended there. <clears throat> Maybe. So they eventually kind of like get her story and she sees that oh they're actually seven little men not 
seven children and then they start working together and they build a happy relationship and it's fun and dandy and then the queen realizes that Snow isn't dead, transforms herself into an old hag, poisons an apple, finds Snow White, feeds her the apple, Snow eats it even though the animals and the dwarves try to help her and not get her to eat it and like try to take down the witch or well the queen who turned into the old hag. Kind of similar to Beauty and the Beast really if you think about it. I digress. Uh, she ends up going under the sleeping spell. The prince comes in, kisses her, loves first kiss. She wakes up, movie's done. They live happily ever after. I didn't read my description at all. I don't know if you could tell. So that is uh, pretty much the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. If you can't tell from my uh, recap, I'm not a huge fan of this movie or of like her as a princess, but We'll get to that in a minute. There are multiple characters in this, if you know. There are the seven dwarfs, Doc, Dopey, Sleepy, Grumpy, Sneezy, Happy, and Bashful. So there are the seven dwarfs. And then we have Snow White, who is played by Adriana Casaletti. I think that's how you pronounce that. And fun one thing that I did notice with the casting of this is Sleepy, Grumpy, and Dopey are all played by the same person, or rather like Dopey when he's doing the bubbles because he doesn't speak otherwise, and that person is Pinto Kolvig. So he voices all three of those characters, wouldn't have been able to notice had I not known going into it. So the history of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is the first full-length feature hand-drawn animated film and it's also Walt Disney's first animated film and feature length animated film. I already said that. We know this. It is based on the story Snow White by the Brothers Grimm and in the film's initial run it earned eight million dollars in international earnings. It was so popular that it had many theatrical releases time and time again throughout history and it wasn't released on home video until October 28th of 1994. Eventually it got put out on DVD October 9th of 2001 and then Blu-ray October 6th of 2009. I got my copy about a month ago because I don't really care about Snow White. Although the film was nominated for Best Musical Score, it lost to 100 Men and a Girl, which is a comedy musical about a daughter of a struggling musician who created an orchestra with all of his friends. And I actually looked up kind of a trailer and it sounds interesting, but the movie lost out to that musical and Walt was not happy. Uh, he eventually, the following year, was awarded an honorary Oscar for Snow White, but he didn't want the honorary Oscar, he wanted his own Oscar. So he worked very hard to get that Oscar and was disappointed that Snow White did not win. The estimated budget for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was $250,000, 10 times the budget of Walt's short film series, Silly Symphonies, which is a lot of money. The story had actually originally been about the Seven Dwarfs, but kind of switched its focus to being more about Snow White and the Evil Queen and their relationship, kind of ignoring some of the facts with the Seven Dwarves. There were actually multiple scenes filmed with the Seven Dwarves that ended up being cut from the final product. I haven't watched the special features on the Blu-ray so I don't know if they're there or not, but there was a scene where the dwarves eating soup very noisily and then there was another one of them building a bed for Snow White so that way she wouldn't have to sleep on seven little tiny beds, like they were building her, her own bed for them. Both of these scenes were animated by the same person. That person was Ward Kimball. Ward Kimball was very discouraged after this because his two scenes got cut and Walt really liked the animation that he did. He didn't really want Ward to quit, but he was wanting to quit because he felt unwanted and he didn't, he wasn't really confident after that. So Walt Disney ended up promoting him and made him a supervising animator to Jiminy Cricket in Pinocchio, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. Speaking of Jiminy Cricket, we'll get into our fun facts. Jiminy Cricket is mentioned in Snow White because it's a saying, like kind of like you would say, oh my god, instead they say Jiminy Crickets. 
they say it two or three times I caught, I believe, which I just thought that that was a fun little Easter egg almost since Walt then took that phrase and made a character for Jiminy Cricket and had one of the animators that worked on this film, even if his scenes were cut, be the supervisor for Jiminy Cricket, which is just really fun. The girl who plays Snow White, this is interesting. Adriana Casaletti has five acting credits. The reason she only has five acting credits is because Walt didn't want her to do any other voice work because he thought that her voice was unique and special and wanted Snow White to stay pure and basically untainted. He didn't want her to be recognized in anything else and be like, oh, that's Snow White. He wanted the illusion that Snow White really is this fairy tale person. So he didn't let her work on anything else, which is insane. She's in like the background of The Wizard of Oz. And then credits that she has prior to Snow White include Naughty Marietta, which was came out in 1935. She played a dancing doll. And then The Bird Wore Red, which she was a peasant girl that came out also in 1937 along with Snow White. After Snow White, she was a like choir singer in It's a Wonderful Life in 1946. And again, she was a background character in The Wizard of Oz in 1939. Adriana was actually born to an opera family. Her father was an immigrant from Italy and he taught music. So Disney actually went to him knowing that he was teaching music and broad, or not Broadway, but opera. So he went to him asking if any of his students would be a good fit for Snow White when her father introduced him to her daughter, his daughter, words and Walt really liked her voice and kind of her style and ended up making her both the speaking role and the singing role for Snow White. Going back to Pinto Kolvig who voiced Sleepy Grumpy and Dopey Blowing the Bubbles, he is most well known for voicing Goofy which is fantastic. I love Goofy. Another fun fact that I found was that the voice actor who played Sneezy, Billy Gilbert, is actually known for his dramatic sneezes. He's it's that's like what why would you want to be known for your dramatic sneezes but it turned out to be good for him he is credited on imdb for 228 films including well, i wouldn't say it was my favorite but one of the films that i really enjoy and i kind of want to watch again after knowing this his girl friday i'm it that's just so cool I love it. Fun facts are awesome. Um, he was the model and voice for Sneezy in part thanks to his sneezing routine. Like he's known for his dramatic sneezes and eventually Walt was just like, yes, Sneezy. Um, Snow White currently holds the number 10 spot in top box office films if you adjust for inflation, which is amazing. And that is mostly thanks to the fact that it has been released in theaters time and time again. Uh, another fun fact that has nothing to do with Snow White, Gone with the Wind still holds number one. Disney encouraged his staff to see a variety of films which had influence not only on Snow White but other films within the production, like within the Disney studios, all ranging in different genres. So he had them go see a bunch of different films. This, for Snow White in particular, is probably my favorite fact of Snow White, but he had them go see two films that heavily influenced Snow White, and it's two of my favorite films. They are two German expressionist films, Nosferatu and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which is insane and incredible, and I'm so, that's, I like that those were influencers for Snow White. So that is all I have for history and fun facts. Now for my overall thoughts and feelings and somewhat review of this movie. First of all, the animation in this is stunning. I love the hand-drawn 2D animation. In some ways, I like it better than the animation we have now. The animation we have now is good, don't get me wrong, but I just really like the hand-drawn 2D stuff. Yes, I know it takes forever and that I'm probably never going to go back to it, but it's just beautiful, especially like the restorations that they did to put out the Blu-ray. 
it's it's beautiful the animals are fantastic the uh, uh lake that there is with the reflections and stuff is just stunning all of it is great and i know that disney uh actually sent some of his people like to go study like real life animals i know he did it a lot for bambi i'm assuming he did it for Be or for snow white as well but he had them actually study animals to like record how they move so they could get proper movements for them and which is just, it's, it's an art form. It is truly an art form. And that's probably why it is still so popular today. Out of the Seven Dwarfs, I think Dopey is my favorite. I don't know, I just, I just love him so much. And the fact that he's nonverbal and he's gotta be very expressionate. And the scene with him blowing the bubbles is my favorite. Cause it's just so cute. I love Dopey. All in all, this isn't my favorite. It's never been my favorite. Uh, I have actually watched this rather recently. I had to watch it in my film history class back in 2012. So it's been fairly recent. I haven't seen it prior to 2012 since I was a kid probably. But again, it's not one of my favorites. As far as like the 11 princesses go that I have seen the movies of, because there's two I haven't, she is my least favorite, which Sorry, Snow, it's just what it is. I can respect her and I can respect it as a movie, but I just, I don't, it's just not my thing. Uh, I will probably watch it again now that I have it because it is a good film, like animation wise, but it wouldn't be my first choice if I were to watch a Disney film. The songs are catchy. I do like the uh, Whistle While You Work and the Hi Ho song. I was singing along and dancing along and they're fun, they're catchy. But overall, it's just kind of meh for me. It's not something I would rant and rave about, but it's also not something that I would complain too much about. It's just kind of there. And that is really all I have on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do. I'm excited to continue and hopefully uh, we'll get a little smoother with how I put things in order. It's fine, it'll be fine, everything is fine. I'm really excited. The next magic carpet ride we will be going on is through Cinderella and hopefully that will be up within the next week or two. I, I, I'm just, spoiler, I liked Cinderella a lot more than I thought I did. So that's gonna be a fun, fun video. So thank you guys for joining me on this magic carpet ride. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more magic carpet rides in the future. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.